Straight politicking. I'm here with Spider Loke, the most easty. Munchie be the mayor, and I'm Alex Alonso. How you brothers doing today, man? Blessed, blessed, blessed abundantly. Blessed. How about you, Munch? Oh, I'm gushy, man. Blessed and highly favored, like my man to the left. <laughs> what y'all been up to? Any anything new that we want to let the people know going on in your circles? Um, well, this weekend was pretty exciting for me myself. I got the opportunity not only to meet but spend some time um, with and around Miss Nikki at night, watching her produce her new dating show. That's right. Yeah, and uh, she actually invited me to be a contestant on the show. Um, so I came and was like standby for just in case because I wasn't really interested in participating that much, but I didn't want to leave her hanging in case she needed me. So finally got to chop it up, talk to her. It was real cool. So you didn't, you weren't one of the guys that was judging the girls or having the girls judge y'all? Nah, I just kind of held behind the scenes and, you know, posted up moral support. So it went cool? It went cool. She, uh, she had so challenges, it was, um, some difficulties, but what I admired about her, she didn't, she didn't break a sweat. She adjusted. So her original format, the way she planned it to go, is not the way it turned out, but she still made sure she got some quality content. Hey, cause I couldn't make it, right? Cause, cause I, I didn't get relieved. You were supposed to be there too? Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah, right? I couldn't make it, you know what I'm saying? Cause I had my daddy duties or whatever. Okay. I didn't get relieved, but um, it's gonna be an ongoing thing. Cause I'm gonna hop on here. I got you. I got you. I'm here on everything my Sunday's sir. best. I'm <laughs> pulling up like Huggies. We got you. I saw I saw her first episode. She had a, this amazing blue gown on. It mm. looked like a you know a five thousand dollar dress, and she was looking amazing in that gown. Right. I didn't get to see that uh, <laughs> that episode. I think she caught that the pilot episode. I didn't get to see it. Yeah. So how how did uh how did it ultimately go? It went well. She um it was Saturday and Sunday. Um, Saturday she had uh, quite a few girls, quite a few dudes, and um, there was some confusions, but. It worked out. Then the next day, her attendance was a slightly unexpected, so she actually flipped the format, and she entered into the contest herself. Mm. Yeah. Okay, Nate. Yeah, she did her thing. So, <laughs> so somebody's gonna win a date with her. Of course, yes. Okay. Yes. Yes. Hey, and and these little dating shows, this little concept, this this model is becoming popular online right now. Indeed. Indeed. Who who, who um got that going? Who who broke that? It seemed like uh, this ain't nothing like twenty verses. Like it, uh, Nick thing seemed more like speed dating. You know what I mean? That's what it's like seeing to me. It had a it had a speed date element. The, right. One of the things that they did there was speed dating, but they had other little things they did too. Um, the co the common online dating scene for the black people, I believe. I won't say started, but it's like Kendra G seems like she's known for being the one to kind of pioneer this modern movement. She has a s totally different format, but just for like um, dating shows online, I think that's like one of the ones that I could say is most recently known. Okay, well, what's going on new in your circle, Munchie? Oh man, see, it's the same old, same old script. Uh, I was supposed to pull up to what he talking about, but you know, so I had to do my daddy thing. And, uh, I was pretty much same same, same old script. She ain't nothing, nothing new under the sun. Oh, okay, okay. I was I was in court the other day on a case, and uh, I, I ended up not having to testify because the judge ruled against what I was there to testify about. But real quickly, you know, social media is almost comes into every trial now, mm. every trial, and it usually goes against the defendant. They pull up all his Facebook, all his Instagram, all those DM messages that you think you deleted. Facebook saves them behind the scenes and prints them out. It'll be a thousand pages of all old DMs. So that all comes in. But in this situation, the victim was also a gang member. And the defense attorney wanted to let the jury know, look, my guy shot the dude. But there may have been a reason why he shot the dude because this dude was a gangster too. And he may have feared for his life. And here's all his social media, the victim's social media. But the judge ruled, no, we're not going to go into the victim's social media. We're not going to go into his gang past. We're not to go. We're not going to go into any of that. So I end up sitting there in the in the lobby waiting for nothing. 
For nothing or for your payment still? Oh, yeah, you still get paid. But, you know, I'm there ultimately. To do a job. To, to, Correct. To basically level the playing field for both sides, you know. Do, do you know if the defense suffered from the fact that you didn't get to participate? Well, absolutely that they they took a hit because that's the, the prosecution was arguing we don't want that to come in. So they're, they're arguing against it because they know this could possibly hurt my chance of getting a conviction here for first degree murder. And the defense is like, hey, I could probably get a second degree, a manslaughter, possibly a self-defense. So, yeah, definitely hurt. But at least the defense attorney went on the record to object so that if the dude is convicted, he has a, an appeal right right there. He could appeal on that. So, uh, hey, I, I I don't believe gangbangers are victims, bro. So if if, if you know what I'm saying, I, if 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 I had it my way, if if a gangbanger cut the gangbanger, nobody would go to jail. <laughs> no, no, for real, because yeah. you, you know what you signed up that's for. You, be, you agree with that that's too? That's what I be saying. Yeah, yeah. Just, just just like when when people go overseas and they go to war, and nobody go to jail when you bomb somebody mm. from from America or the other way around. You know what I'm saying? And you know what? Juries kind of agree with y'all because that's why prosecutors are. If they agree, they it'd be not more not guilty. Please, no, they, but they don't agree. But no, this this is what's going on now. Victims, even though they're gang members, the prosecution goes out of their way to try to prevent the jury from ever learning that the victim's a gang member mm. because they know that some jurors believe, oh, a gang member killed a gang member. Oh, I'm done, mm. not guilty. So th mm. th they've lost a lot of cases because of this. Oh, a gang member killed a gang member. The, what are we doing here then? The, 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 you know? Well, I'm I'm gonna say in this case when uh they had KP from Roller Hunters on the news for getting killed, mm -hmm. it, they they didn't they didn't portray him in a bad way, and like they showed everything like him being a father and all that little that that. But see, I'm not saying that when a gang banger get killed, I don't want him looking like a a, a mass murderer or a monster on the news because somebody did lose a loved one, right? But I'm just saying, when it comes to the court of law, ain't no, ain't no victim or something. But like you know what I'm saying, they they signed up for that, just like you would sign up for the YMCA. Yeah, and you know I'm saying you chose to go to the NFL if you get injured and it's a career ending injury. You know what I mean? So like I said last straight politicking, I would suggest don't subscribe to the, the streets. Period. You know what I'm saying? But unfortunately. Um, People ain't gonna listen. No, 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 they ain't. That's, that's, that's just my. Uh... That message is for the thirteen-year-old, mm. and the thirteen-year-old is already highly influenced by his immediate surroundings when he walks off that front porch. And that's why I'm, I'm more so into game prevention versus intervention. I'm not trying to say spider loat. That been from East Coast for years. Yeah. I'm not trying to say these niggas with tattoos all over their face and shit. Like, but if if you just started and you got you could like you know what I'm saying you got a reputation. You can stop before you gain a reputation. People don't forgive, or or even before you start game banging, that's something different. Like my my dad, 62, 63, and somebody might parole five years ago, and he did something to him back in ninety nine, and he might still want some get back. I can't save my pops from what he did back then. Yeah, that's unforgivable. But I'm talking about game prevention. You preventing them. You know what I'm saying? And I'm more I cool with that. that. All right. Well, I want to get into a few uh, fact checks from last episode. Uh, I made a mistake saying that Aaron Burr got into a duel with uh, Jackson. It was actually he got into a duel with Hamilton. Hmm. So let me just uh, briefly correct the record here. Um, the the Burr Hamilton duel took place in Weehawken, New Jersey, between Aaron Burr, who was the third U.S. Vice President at the time. This dude was a, the third U.S. Vice President versus Alexander Hamilton, who was the first. Secretary of Treasury. And this happened on July 11th, 1884, and the duel was a culmination of a bitter rivalry that had developed over the years between the two men who were high-profile politicians in a newly established United States. So basically, they both had a gun. They walked. They had their backs facing each other. They walk a certain amount of distance. They turn around, and whoever busts faster, whoever busts more accurate. Who won? Who um. Let's see here. In the duel, Burr shot Hamilton in the abdomen. Hamilton returned fire and hit a tree branch above and behind Burr's head. Hamilton was transported across the Hudson River for treatment in the present-day Greenwich Village of New York City, where he died the following day on July 12, 1804. Damn. Now tell me that's not gangster. Damn. Okay, was it all <laughs> was it was it all behind politics or was it behind a broad? They had a the, uh, well, I don't know the specifics, but I think it was like political wrangling going on between the two over the years, just like the way 
Trump and Biden go at it. They go at it. It was making me think about the fact that Trump, we could potentially have a president that cannot bear arms at this current state because they he's a, he's a felon now. So if he does indeed run and win, how do they balance that with the fact that it can't be around no weapons? I think it's a loophole. You'd have to do it in another country. Based on the CSR. Mm. Oh, I you mean, get I a con- you get a country to host the duel. <laughs> no, I'm talking about Trump currently. No, he's saying he can't even be around weapons, but so he got the security. He What's they called? He Secret can't service? be around weapons in the United States. But as a president, so if he wins the presidency, how does he, what does he do because he's ex-con? He could probably pardon himself and then strip the conviction. <laughs> yeah. But, um, and, and I think this, we brought this up on the last episode because you talked about duels in the modern sense. Mm-hmm. But this is something that's been going on for a long time. Yeah, the concept. And imagine, what, what what's the public's opinion? Most people don't know about this duel. Right. 1804. But this is against top-notch politicians that said, you know what? Let's go duel to the death. And they both agreed. Mm. People would look at that today and say, these guys are silly. Gangsters, been, the, 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 the politicians been the gangsters and the criminals and people that can't be trusted. Absolutely. So, the, the, see, now you just further, the, 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 no, so you stamp it. You know what I'm saying? So that's Burr and Hamilton, not Jackson. I said Jackson last week. But um, also, one of y'all asked, was Alan Thicke a musician like his son? And I said, no, he wasn't. But it turned out Alan Thicke was a musician. Okay, that was me. Because Robin Thicke, I'm like, we was talking about. Yeah, Robin Thicke got the hits. Okay. But, but Alan Thicke actually composed some of the theme songs to TV shows, and he also did the Three's Company one, which you probably mm. didn't watch, but that was one of my shows. I watched it. Yeah. Mm. Come and knock on my door. Come and knock on my door. <laughs> We've been waiting for you. Yeah. So, yeah, he was a, um, I didn't know. He, he's a music composer. So, um, there we go. On Oh, and one more thing. Ben Roethlisberger, he has two titles. Oh, he does. 2005, the season of 2005, of course. You know, football's confusing. When you say... He got the title for 2005. He really played the Super Bowl in the beginning of 06. Okay. Right? Because championships were played in Correct. January. Well, now they're played in February. But Spider right? wasn't off because he said he got two appearances and then he got yeah. one. You yeah. know what I'm saying? And he but, also won the 08 season, which would have been played in 09. Okay. And the most yards rushing that he ever had in um, – Oh man, I, I had it here. Yeah, they corrected me and said he he was a running quarterback. No, he was absolutely 68. not. That's what they said in the. He had I mean? he had sixty eight or sixty nine in one of these seasons that he I won. Swear to God, I just guessed out of nowhere. Yeah, let me pull it up. Um, the season that he won the Super Bowl was something like sixty something. I swear, I just grabbed the number out of nowhere. But that's that's pretty impressive that you don't barely if you run in sixty eight yards a season. How many is that per game? Like I don't know, five. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> maybe. And and you end up winning the title. Yeah. But you think that's the quarterback of the past? Of course. I disagree. What, what's your position on that, uh Quarterback? Bungie? Yeah. If, if you're not a dual threat, like you can't take off and run and slang it, you got to be one of the quarterbacks that's going to sit back there and, and, and put yourself at risk and hang in there. Like like Brett Favre used to, he'd sit back there and like put himself at risk. And, and uh, what's called a dual also, but he, uh, uh, Mahomes, he'd sit back there and just, let the let let the uh, whole thing collapse and they just be you know what I'm saying, so so like if if you're not a dual threat where you go break and you could slang it you gotta at least be a quarterback that could slang it and be able to just sit back there like the name I was trying to think of was Joe Burrow from you know what I'm saying he put himself at risk a whole lot mm. so you gotta be w- willing to do that. O five Ben Roethlisberger ran for sixty nine yards the year he won the Super Bowl. I don't know where I got that number from. That's in 08, he ran for 101 yards that season where he won the Super Bowl. The most he's ever ran for was 204. Oh, he had a big year. That was his 07. That was his fourth year in. But do you know that he played all the way up to 2021? I didn't know his career was that long. Mm-hmm. And he never really had a losing record. And he ran for five yards in 2021, mm-hmm. 11 yards in 2020, and seven yards in 2019. Of course, these years he wasn't. Yeah, he's still running. Yeah, he was. <laughs> I mean, he, he hasn't won a Super Bowl. You know, since 08. Mm. And that was his sixth, his um, fifth year in. Mm. Fifth year, so he won a Super Bowl his second year in and his fifth year in, and we ain't really heard from him in the postseason. Right. right. But those two Super Bowls were impressive, and he only ran for 69 yards in that 05 season. Um, but all right. That, yeah, that's 20 years ago. 
20 years ago. That's crazy. That's the year my son was born. Well, my youngest son was born in 05. It's the quarterback of the past. And this this is ancient history to our kids. Yeah. Yeah. The past. Because you met, when I was growing up in the 80s, ancient history to me was the 60s. Right, right. But really, the 60s and the 80s is not that oh, far apart, right? Right. right. But when people talk about the 60s, I'm like, damn, that sounds like a whole other like a century yeah, <laughs> because it also went from black and white to color so shit did make a lot of change from back from the 60s to the 80s i think the biggest change that we've ever seen was the, uh the 80s to the 90s because the 90s ushered in the internet and the internet has revolutionized everything we do but some people might say well the internet was out but social media wasn't true so social media really is the 2010 from 2010 to 2020 is the social media period that's a big big usher in but just as far as visually looking to go from a black and white world of media to color i think that's like a was a big thing black and white to color was in the 60s what about cell phones because because my mom got a cell phone in the early 90s and my dad was pissed off that she got one right but you know what i'm saying because my dad he, he bare minimum he he could you know, very little necessities he could live you know what i'm saying like what you buy that for you know what i mean and she still had, she, my mom got the same number from 94. So did you ever have a pager, Munchie? Nah, that's before me. I, 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 I had one, but it didn't work. It was my brother's shit. I clip it, <laughs> I clip it on like, you know what I'm saying? It, it, ain't, ain't nobody paging that shit. I'm too young for that one. Hey, I had a pager and the, the number one pager spot, at least in the late 80s, was Dell Commerce Communication. I don't know if Munchie knows this spot. Of course not. Dell Commerce Communication was on 109th in Crenshaw in the heart of Englewood, right next to that Winchell's Donut. But guess what? Niggas was getting smoked messing with them pay phones. What made it the number one spot? It was $14 a month, and Dell Commerce was a black-owned business, and everybody tapped in with Dell Commerce. In fact, his brother died in the 1992 riots. Mm. But, um, yeah, everybody would go to – is is the Winchell's 109th in Crenshaw? Winchell's 108th. 108th. Okay, so the Winchell's donut was right there. There was a little, little driveway next to the Winchell's, and right next to the driveway was Dell Commerce Communication. And you would go in there to pay your bill, and all you see was – was gangsters from all over LA paying their bill, paying dope, their bill. Dope dealers. Dope dealers, you know, paying their <laughs> bill. And uh, Rocky tapped me in, Rocky rest in peace tapped me in, hey, you want a pager, man, go to Dell Commerce. <laughs> so I'm, it's crazy though, I'm driving all the way to 108th and Crenshaw to pay a pager bill, but that was the spot. But uh, I don't know if, yeah, pagers was, everything is revolutionary. At, when something comes, the typewriter, I was reading when the typewriter came out and whatever year that was. My brother had a word processor. I'm talking about the word processor was After more digital. Yeah. yeah. I'm talking about the tat 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 right. tat when that came out. And then printing in the first place. Um so but I do think the 2010, 2020 for the internet, that social media, man, social media has probably had the biggest impact on human history than any other technological advancement or development. Hmm. It, you get our news from there. We get our drama from there. Fights are started on there. I mean, relationships are started. Relationships, just everything is, is is popping off on social Work. media. But you know what? You could also get, you can get embarrassed on the social wow. media. And there's this white girl named Lily hey, Gaddis. I'm just gonna react to this clip of you and Adam too, man. I'm with, uh, oh come on, man. This, this what, what them broads the say? Clip. Spilling the tea. Hmm? This is him on the clip. That's Brick. Yeah. Oh, uh, does he want to go on speaker real quick? Yeah. When we should we play it first? No, he, he stay I, on the phone. I, 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 I shut out brick, not the trick. They right, had it, nigga. Don't see late. And we, we gonna jump to the um to the all of that brick. He said, "Don't see late." To the no, no like, jumper, to the no jumper clip. We'll come back to Lily Gaddis. Right. You got to put him on speaker because we can't hear him. You know, oh, his speaker low. low. Oh, okay. P point it to the. You got any? Of, you got either of these cash number? Yeah, call much. Yeah, call my All right. Okay, we can you hear, hear him. Can you hear him, Alex? Okay, when so you were doing the podcast. Here we go. We're gonna play the clip with right now. The real G face, and you were joined by <laughs> Spider Loke. <laughs> Before we even get into like what you thought of it, I could say I've only seen clips, so it's like I, I might be missing like the full narrative. But from my perspective, reading the comment section, that is the most negativity I've ever seen towards any host co-host, et cetera, po probably ever in the history of this podcast. He was interrupting and like just being off topic to such an extent. I've just never seen that level of anger coming from the fans. 
They, Especially because they like the, the G face too. Two. They said, "Can we get a round two without Spider, please?" But yeah. He's like, "Can y'all do it again without Spider?" That shit fucked me up because that's my boy, and I be rooting <laughs> for him. So it's like I don't want to say nothing. But the week before that, Spider called me kind of bad because I I came to work uh, that day after my homie died, and I came loaded, and damn homie, they clipped me like. But we was here for eight hours, and I popped the whole bar. So I don't know how I was fighting that. So he was mad at you for being like, unprofessional? Don't let the world see you like this. Cause like a big brother, though. Uh -huh. uh, but then you come and ask me, like, this is my last day up here. Like, bro, let me sit in on the interview. It's my big bro. I look up to cuz. Like, you get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But I didn't know what level of intoxication mm -hmm. until we sat down. And he just started, like. Was he just drunk or what? Cuz wrote up a paper. <laughs> he just wrote a speed and paper. A just a paper? Piece of paper. <laughs> Oh, you didn't watch it. I seen oh, clips, but right. I didn't see that. It gets Donnie. It, it gets no, it to that. Wild. And I have to watch it because I want to be on the the round two when we run it back with yeah. the real G face. Yeah. So I gotta watch it so I can take notes. But I'm just seeing like shout out to overly invested or whatever, bro. He made an amazing compilation of every time he interrupted. Oh my god! Then he shook his hand. He gave him the ends. I'm like, hey, bro. Don't give him. I'm like, oh, bro, okay, don't give my cousin the ears. He's from, What's the hands? Like, we'll, he uh, gave we'll him the two right fingers there. and the thumb. As we got, we got Brick Baby on the line, and uh, Spider. First, Spider, uh, what's your reaction to to that clip? My initial reaction was different than my actual reaction is. Uh, I called Brick when I first saw it before I even watched the whole clip, and uh, we got into a little back and forth, a disagreement. Um, my main thing what made me call him is because he said Spider called me with a concern about the way I appeared on the platform but yet still he was discussing his concern for the way I appeared on the platform so I was telling him but he was live at the time when I called him and I didn't know so we had to basically cut it short so I didn't get a chance to follow up with him but once I followed through and watched the whole clip and saw the entirety of it I had a better resolution with it. So I called him this morning to tell him that he didn't answer. So he was actually just calling me back, returning my call, not knowing we were sitting here reacting to it. But I can agree, those comments, it was some of the worst comments <laughs> I've ever seen as far as consecutive uh, people not liking what I was doing. Hey Brick, what, 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 was, what was you feeling during the middle of that interview? I just know my bro was at at his limit, but he still is a great conversationalist, so he he could win it through it. But it was like when he was when he was breaking through, and I'm like I'm like oh shit I'm like uh, I can't tell him because I I, I I tapped my nigga like two times and I'm just like we finna rock out like shit I be you know what I'm saying I can't judge because I I be loaded sometimes. <laughs> you know what I'm saying all I can do is work and it's my big brother so it ain't no. Hey, come to, you know what I'm saying? It was just like, all right, well, we just doing this with turned up. But at the end of the day, I really didn't see it because we was it, we was there in real time until all the fans started DMing everybody and then people in the red. You know what I'm saying? But at the end of the day, Spider always get on my ass. What we talk about in private do need to be on in private. But I did not bring up this, this, that situation, I reacted to it, and that's why last night when we was talking, I'm like, damn. I, I mean, I'll be trying to hold my tongue. That's why I'm like, did you watch the whole thing? Because I doubled right back on them and told them that they were doing a great thing. You get what I'm saying? But I, I, I don't know if we reacted to that part, too. No, we cut it off a little shorter than that because I don't oh, think right. Alex really knew how long it was. But no, it's all love because, uh, you know, it is what it is. I know I was super loaded. I ain't smoked a cigarette in 10 years. <laughs> That's so, what I said. I said we was going. You, I, it's funny to me how I said it. It was like a joke to me, matter because who can brick baby judge? You get what I'm trying right, to tell you? Right. Right. So I'm like, my well, nigga was. Hey, I done had plenty moments. He had his moments. Yeah. All right, <clears throat> I'm gonna tell you what's funny. Cause Spider critiqued me about my drinking on camera, and then I I, I limited the. I, he said, "Don't out the bottle, put it in the cup." Well. It, he doctored my shit, and then he get faded like blueprint. <laughs> to so, my to so, so 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 like we, we just got to do some little self checks, and then like bone bounce back, and everything be be you know what I'm saying Gucci and good body. To, to my defense, that was not a scheduled uh, appearance from me, 
and I had kind of reached my limit on our shit where I didn't do too much. We was baking it with the baddies. Yeah, I think I should have, that was it. The going to a first, it, we didn't just go walk into the next interview. We kicked it, got loaded some more, then did the next interview. And I, yeah, I, I, was, I was done. It's that creeper. You know when it creep up on you and you already in that position. Hey, Brick, uh, real quick, uh, th what does Adam have to say about you when sometimes you're really loaded and sometimes you seem a little bit off your game because of the level of intoxication you have? Does he ever pull you to the side and, and give you some advice on that? Yeah. The day that Spider reached out to me since I didn't already ran my mouth and said he reached out to me. The day Spider reached out to me, right? Hold on. I'm, hold on. That's right. Daddy Tone. Let me get it. Mm -hmm. Let me get it. Salute. So he had reached out the same day, and he was like, "Hey, he he was a, he was a little bit nice." He said that, "Hey, can you not smoke that much weed before the next pod?" He know it wasn't no weed. You get what I'm mm -hmm. saying? But he just put let me know like, "Hey, bro, <laughs> you was too loaded the other day." So what I did after my big bro checked me and Adam checked me, I just lowered my doses and everything to where I could damn near program all the time because everything he takes. He tell me I take his gold because he don't. He ain't never told me nothing that hurt. Yeah, I I've watched you quite a few times, and I I, I sense that when you're less loaded, you you're on top of your game. You're sharper. Your interviews are better. I've seen you a few times when you were super loaded, and I was like, this brick is a, he he not on his game right now. I mean, when you slow down the week on camera, you know what I'm saying. <laughs> Sometimes they gonna get you. All right. Um, I appreciate you tapping in, man. I'm going to highlight you a little deaf longer. Hey, 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 Munchie. What's the deal? You already know, keep it whooping. All the time. Yeah. <laughs> Can we ask you one question before you go? What's going on? Why was y'all half naked? Oh. <laughs> oh, I came in there with that energy. I was already sliding with the chain and no, you know what I'm saying, on, on my thing all day. I ain't had no shirt on. We hit quarters. You know, I'm still... I was still on from last night. We was at the other day. So, nigga, I pop out. It's hot to the motherfucker. I just didn't have my shirt on. And then they just wanted to be gay and be like, hey. <laughs> oh, they, oh, they peeled out, too. All right. <laughs> they peeled out so much I walked in there. <laughs> all right. Good looking, cuz. All right. All right. I lay, bro. Look. All right. All right, I didn't I didn't play the whole clip because yeah, you know, it was six minutes. That's yeah, it. yeah. That's it. but um, some of the other things that he said, uh, Adam asked if Spider had ever done an e pill. Man, everybody that know me, if you tapped in with my journey, my experience, this and is not no stranger to me. It's never been a stranger to me, and uh, I'm totally sober today. No drinking, no thizzing. Of course, I've had my cabbage each morning. I do that, but. It's not something I do all the time, but yeah, I'm not a stranger to this and though. Well, I think he asked, does he do, do you do them regularly? Not if you do them. I think he knows you do them. There's a, been a time in my life where I did them regularly, but I don't do them regularly currently. Do you think that the the pills or the thizzing does impact interviews and podcasting if you do it the same day? Um, well, to be honest, it used to be part of my routine. I wouldn't do either. I wouldn't go live stream or interview without popping the this. I usually have very little interest in con con conducting long time monologues or dialogues with just when I'm sober. I don't really give a fuck about hearing what somebody else has to say or sitting in front of my computer talking to the world to no audience. That shit used to be hard to develop. So I used to pop almost every time. So I got in the habit, uh, every time I'm going to engage and do some shit, I pop to get talkative. So popping and drinking and being too talkative probably has a, pr a problem. You gotta find some balance. Well, Adam said that that was the record for most negative comments on a No Jumper interview. Uh, I know that out of the ones you've done on street TV, the the Ron Ron one got probably the most negative comments. Um, I'm not sure, and and maybe even episode one of Straight Politicking got some. But uh, yeah. <laughs> well, outside of just those two, you already know, Alex. Yeah. It's my number one. No, I'm, I'm gonna tell everybody that when Spider's on his game, there's nobody in this podcasting world that can come up with a better conversation that has the experience of the streets that that's been in the entertainment business, that has tapped in with a whole lot of, of rappers from, from the past that are still relevant today. Um, th there's no other person that brings what Spider brings to the table. 
when he's not, I don't know what the, what, what, what do we say? When you're not overly thizzing or when, I, when you're, when Spider is Spider. When you're not on, just to sum it yeah, up. When, 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 yeah, when Spider ain't on one, can't nobody really mess with Spider in this podcasting. And Adam knows that. Salute. Everybody knows that. They just know that there are certain times that, like th- this this interview with uh, the real G face, that we getting something happened. And I'm gonna ask you this: Rest in peace to Puto. He had a birthday the other day. Mm-hmm. I know he was one of your closest closest comrades. Yes. And the last week might have been a little tough for you. The last couple weeks, or the last month. The, the 2024. So far, since February 18th, this has been extremely difficult, but no excuses. Uh, this isn't getting loaded, but my lifestyle since the early 2000s, since this didn't came out, it's not like nothing new to me. Being on these platforms, trying to carry myself in a professional manner on a consistent basis, perhaps so, it's more new. So therefore, they're like the homie say, Munchie, uh, um, makes me aware that he does a lot of self-reflect and he suggested I should do something as well uh, not too long ago. And it's something that men do on a common basis if they care about being presentable. So I'm not above that. We know, Alex, that my number one critique is cutting people off. It comes before podcasting, in my relationships, talking to females and shit. You're trying to have conversations. I know this is something that uh, I need to do better in. Now, with with the Ron Ron interview, that was the number one thing because people were really there. When you have someone like Ron Ron, they're they're tuning in for Ron Ron. G Face, I've never seen G Face before a day in my life. But the minute Bro started talking, I was like, I'm already, I'm already pulled into his story. G Face got you know? the it factor, bro. He yeah. could, he could, he could, he could podcast if you want to. He he carry himself straight, and then he like he, he got a good delivery, and then he he a smooth low pop. Little, not little. He a smooth pave dude. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So here's the problem: when you have someone like G Face who who's magnetic, Ron Ron who's magnetic, and then you're cutting them off, people are more bothered. If it's just an average dude, ain't no one tripping. But Ron Ron, thirty year walk, thirty years off, no smut from six zero, no smut, no smut. We, we want to hear what Ron Ron had to say. We want to hear what G Face had to say. If it's another guest, ain't nobody even tripping. So I think sometimes you got to say, okay, I got I got a real dope guest here. Let me but even this. if it's a lower tier guest, you know, they gonna get the same respect though. We ain't gonna just say because it's you're Ron right. Ron or somebody. You're you, right. You, you yeah. know, I tried to commit myself to sixty forty. It's just something I have to work on for all the guests. It might have to be 70-30. Or 80-20. Or 80-20, yeah. I'm not tripping. <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to get it right. Well, here, you know what? It, that, that could adjust. That there's a dial on that 80 20 70 30 60 40 when Depending you on who you interview yeah on. when you have Ron Ron it's 80 20 you know G Face 80 20 uh, I don't want to say someone else but someone else 60 40 uh, 80 20 with Ron Ron not 80 20 80 80 for Ron Ron 20 for Spider nah 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 nah, nah. Ron Ron nah, nah 80 too high but Ron Ron got he interesting though and he you know what I'm saying and then you want to hear some rebuttals you know how many stories Ron Ron got that nobody's even heard yet yeah but 80 80 I mean, Kev Mack got some of them. Spider got some of them. I'm sure he's got some more. Hmm. But you know that that's all that that there's a sliding you know a slider on that. Yeah, Ron Ron, personally, I have to admit there was a level of excitement personally to be there talking to him, and that's probably why I wasn't more relaxed with allowing him to so many things I wanted to get out to say to him or ask him. But it was good to hear Adam say. Spider got a lot of potential, so he understand. He, I salute the deuce, deuce, yeah, man. Yeah, he knows. I mean, I, I can admit that, like he said, that may have been the worst moment that we got to reflect on my podcast, and so we could pick apart my worst moment and dissect it. I'm not. Look, it's if, okay. if you 100 percent every time, you out podcast everybody on No Jumper. I'm sober today. We're gonna try this off like, for a while. Like, who do who? My favorites on No Jumper. I like Poetic Flacco. I'm starting to like him. I used to didn't like him. Mm-hmm. I'm starting to like no. bro. See, I, okay, I, 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 I want to take credit on, 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 on bring make making uh, him be lighter on the ears as far as you and Spider. You don't have to take the credit from me because no, you already no, know. Because no, Spider was absolutely like you know what I'm saying. But I being gave it to you though. I'll let you know. No, 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 no. Because no, you was like, man, what the fuck? I wasn't. But I thanked him since then, like for making sure. We see it the way we see it now, because I wasn't seeing it at first. No, Flacco cool. Sharp, Brick, and Flacco. 
those are to me the the top guys at No Jumper, and you're right there with them when you when you bring your A game. Salute, thank you. Yeah, appreciate it. And um, all right, last any any final comments on on the Spider Log No Jumper interview before we move on? Nah. Okay, let's talk about the uh, this, this white girl. Uh, before you play the clip. Uh, this white girl, her name is Lily Gaddis. She was doing a cooking video. She was wearing an apron, trying to look cute, and she just dropped the N word out of nowhere, so casually, so smoothly. And then when she got the backlash, she didn't do what most Karens do. Most Karens retreat, find an excuse. I'm not this. I'm not that. I'm sorry. She just she went a whole nother a whole nother way. Can can we get that clip on Lily Gaddis, please? Everybody I know who's married right now. They're married to broke-ass niggas. Um, and they don't care. We don't give a fuck about your money. I couldn't care less about your fucking money, okay? Okay, do we have do we have her, her reaction? So a recent video of mine seems to have um, upset members of a certain community. And it this um, all the backlash just really made me, you know, just really do a deep dive, like do a soul search. And after all that, I still couldn't find a care. <laughs> all right, that's it. That's Lily Gaddis, boy. She's sticking to her guns. She's standing on business, as everybody says. But is she out of control? You want to go first, buddy, or what? <laughs> oh, go ahead. <laughs> all right, because recently, uh, shout out Angie, uh, Latin affiliated. She interviewed Bozo, and he expressed that he don't use the N-word. And then me, Mariah... You know what I'm saying? We reacted to that because, you know, uh, uh, my boy Lefty Gunplay also said the same thing. Get our respect. You know what I'm saying? But he did say it slips every once in he a says, while. It slips every once yeah. in a while. And he admitted to that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Now, her, she she's very unapologetic about it. But but my question will be like, uh, well, it really like uh, alleviate my question. Because at first I was going to say, where is she raising when she raised around black people? Because, because. You know what I'm saying? Because we had a white girl from the hood and we got Mexicans from the hood and we don't run upon them when they use the word. You know what I'm saying? Because they was raised around us and they, we look at them like us. But I was going to ask, was she raised around us and where did, was she raised at? But and the fact that she just like have no regard and she is unapologetic about it, that's, that's, that's hella boo-boo, bro. Yeah, because if she had a background, she would have said, look, I grew up around black folks. Right. That would have been a part of her second video, which she said nothing of the sort. Right. And then, but see, the thing is, and this alleviate that too. I really believe uh, I use it also, especially when I rap and I talk to the homies. You, ain't nobody supposed to be using the word nigga, period, because it started off as derogatory towards our, our race, period. But scratch that, alleviate that, what I was about to say with that and other, like she's not, she's just like effy, like she she just said she clearly don't care. And like, you know what I'm saying? Do she do celebrity boxing? Because <laughs> like, if you feel that way, you, you get a fake. Lily, I mean, then she's part of your thing. I got mixed feelings about it because I was wondering when I knew we was going to see the clip about that title, I was having the same thoughts as you thought. Maybe she grew up around black. She messed with black dudes. But the way she said it makes it sound like she has nothing to do with black people or having any type of affection for them. She sound like a straight outsider. And then I also have to balance that with the thought that we often express ourselves as being the most influential people in this culture. We set all the trends. And we know, like we say, how we marketed that word, we made it an everyday word. Had it came off a little more with a little more rhythm, a little more smooth, a little more casual, it might not sound so abrasive. But it sounded like somebody that would make you want to spit on them for talking like that when she said it and then for her to double down and come off in the in the beginning of her explanation she sounded like she was about to render yeah. some type of uh, uh, apology and then to flip it like that i and then wear that american flag i guarantee you she's a concealed weapons owner and she's looking for somebody to try her in public to make an example out of all right here's my question though and and spider maybe you could relate to this Cause a bit of me thinking that this chick is just trolling. Mm. Might be. She's just trolling on TikTok for views and likes and and virality. Because it almost sounded like a skit. It almost sounded like she was performing. The niggas. Yeah, the yeah. way it came off. It almost sounded like a, like this was a, a movie or a show and a script and this was her her scene. Is she really, really feeling like that? 
I've seen other part things on TikToks through the years where like white couples would do very derogatory, racist little things on TikTok about blacks. And then a week later, they're on there crying, apologizing, saying they didn't mean it because they got the scholarship snatched from them, things of this nature. Maybe she hasn't received enough uh, consequence. But is is using the N word for deliberate trolling acceptable? W would she get a pass if she came out and said, "Oh no, I was just trolling. I was just that's my it, alter. That's it, my, the it, character it, I'm playing." It, it, your deliberate trolling is somebody black involved? Is they behind it? Is they backing you on it? Because you can't do it on your own. That mm. you no, nah, hell no, nah. no. It ain't it, it ain't acceptable. And how long does she have to take before she reveals all that? I don't think it's trolling. I think, I think she's trying to stand on what she's standing on. And I just want to know, forget having uh, the right to bear a weapon, could you squabble? <laughs> I mean, because it seems like you like attention. Uh, when one of these black young ladies that's, that's an influencer or get out there with you, you know what I'm saying? Oh, but, ooh, but every time I see a Karen get an ass whooping because they did too much, them be some cold ass whoopings. And belt the ass, bro. <laughs> I mean, like, uh, that, that's all I want to know, Lily, you know what I'm saying? Straight politicky, tap in on tap out. We can line you up with some and somebody, you know what I'm saying, to put it together. Well, she's uh, the most famous Karen in, in the United States right now. We're going to see about you, Lily. Man, I got an artist, Honey Hustle or Ash Bash. Which one? What, the one that they catch the fade, what, you know what I'm saying? Whatever one, you you, you could pick which one you want to get down with. Whatever one you think you got to win with. Man, how about that? <laughs> Nigga. Nigga. And she, and she was <laughs> she was talking about Broke ass niggas. But then there's a, <laughs> this raises another question. When she says broke ass niggas, are she talking about broke ass black guys? Because it might be a white guy that says, uh, my nigga or I'm a nigga. She she needs to do she don't give a fuck, so fuck how, what she thought. It, she know how it came across and if she doesn't feel like she owe any type of explanation, fuck her. That's that's the bad part. Her yeah. her, her 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 reaction was the bad part. It ain't the what you said initially is bad, but is the bad part is how you reacted to it. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? She might deal with black men, so she talking about black niggas. Or she might be talking about my friends deal with guys who are broke that call themselves niggas. She could have been looking at it like that too. Because you know, like like how females be like, oh, that's my nigga, and we like, that's my mm -hmm. bitch. Exactly. And she could be on that. I just wanted her to further explain. You know what I'm saying, Lily? Mm -hmm. Well, guess what TikTok did to her her account? What? Just because you asked, I know they must have dis discontinued they, it. They, they banned it. Yeah, they had to. Yeah, they banned it. I literally tap in on tap out. You come on facts over feelings. You come on Richard Hart or straight politic and via stream. We'll holler at you and you could clear this. Shit. You know but, what I'm saying? But she'll be silly, Lily. She went to another platform and reposted the videos. Wow. You standing on business. Huh? <laughs> well, so where is she? Did you figure out where she was from? No, I don't know where she's from. Well, I'm from Inglewood family and we don't like it. <laughs> like, no, for real. But here, here's a little bit. Uh, social media sleuths have discovered that Gaddis was an employee of Rofe of the Carolinas in Wilmington, North Carolina. Mm. And she, and she, and was. She, and was listed in her now deactivated LinkedIn profile as a business development, marketing, and sales manager at the company. Thanks to the backlash, Gaddis has been fired from that, from, from that, writing in a post, oh no, I just got fired, hashtag mob. Unfortunately, she does not seem too worried about it and looks to use the backlash as an opportunity to launch her career as a racist, conservative figure. So we're going to start wow. seeing her on Fox News and on... Um, the very right wing conservative platforms. Yeah. Oh but no, well, well, well maybe her and Norby, uh, uh, that 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 caught all the the, the, the employees that know jumper monkeys yeah. and her could link up and they could do their thing. You know what I'm saying? Give my ten percent for giving her the idea. <laughs> and let me read the last thing that she wrote. Um, she must have wrote this on Twitter. Thanks, Black community, for helping to launch my new career in conservative media. Mm. Y'all played your role well, like the puppets you are. Mm. This is she's not trolling, huh? No, she ain't trolling. She ain't trolling. <laughs> no, she ain't trolling. I mean, it almost sounds like trolling. She a Hell no, nah. that ain't trolling. It, but she thanks, black community, for helping to launch my new career. Is she really gonna get a career? Is she really gonna be on? No, the, no, no, on no, the no, 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 no. Probably because white people are so supportive. You see how many uh, when white people do crimes, they they get donations and they get lawyers. You know what I'm saying? Like, like you know how I many donations? Uh, uh, the dude that that he got in the tow truck and the son right. hopped in the back and he chased the black black kid and killed, killed him. him. How many donations they got? You know how many donations uh, uh, Zimmerman got? Yeah. From, from you know what I'm saying or how much support uh, 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 Trump get? You know what I'm saying after all these little racial uh, rallies they try to put on in Orange County and things. So 
Hell yeah, she'll get that support. But my thing is, can you fight? <laughs> can you fight, Lily? But they often, family, they often ask, what do you think happened to the white sheets and the robes and shit? I mean, they just switched their wardrobe up. Yeah. Nigga, they amongst us, but they just not wearing yeah, that, that now. spirit is still amongst us. Yeah, they, 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 they amongst us. They, 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 they in the grocery stores with us. They, they in the courthouse. They, they, they transcribing. It. They and, and they doing media just like this broad. Mm -hmm. But can you fight? Well, someone's gonna catch her in public one day. That's uh, what I believe. That's embarrassing in front of the world. It's gonna be on camera. One of them grocery stores. One of them Walmart. She gonna least expect it. All right, let's uh, let's move on from Lily Gaddis. Uh, she's out of control. Bitch. Um, <laughs> all right, I saw this clip of Young Thug's attorney <laughs> having a back and forth with the the black judge. The judge wasn't having it, and the judge said. Um, you got to accept the rulings as they are, and the judge felt like he was going to, 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 what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, pull the covers off us. Of no, he want. He, the the judge said that he was trying to like, to, to take control of the court. Hmm. The the lawyer was. Yeah, that the, that uh, Mr. Steele was trying to take control of the court. Mm -hmm. Let let's let's play a quick clip and then we'll talk about it. You, you all are real. You all are really getting yourselves cross purposes at this point in time. I, I, sir, I'm telling you, you are at this point in time. You made some things out of nothing. I think that you're, I think that you're on very precarious ground at this point in time. So I'm telling you at this point in time, he's in custody. We're going to go ahead and start. You can represent Mr. Williams. That's okay. That's fine. I'll take up the other stuff as, uh, as needed, but I'm not going to take it up right now. I will not. Say again. Respectfully, I will not. I cannot. Sir. You have to. Well, you, you're gonna have to do the be, you're gonna have to do the best you can at this point in time because you don't get to extort the court. That's what you're attempting to do at this point in time, sir. Yes, you are. What you're trying to do is I'm not going forward if I don't get this. You know, it, it doesn't work that way, Mr. Adams. And I and and I and I'm and I'm telling you at this point in time, I I would I would just kind of govern yourself accordingly, sir. I'm telling you. As the court, under these particular circumstances, everything will come out as it as it as it as it should. I don't think I don't think, sir, sir. I don't have enough information at this point in time to address it. I don't. But but I'm telling you, at this point in time, there is nothing that was given, said, whatever this morning that. Um, accuracy to some of the information that we but sir, I don't even know your your your, your co counsel your co counsel won't even tell me who said who said whatever. Okay, okay, and 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 the ch the challenge I'm having in this particular circumstance is that is such a violation of the sacrosanctness of the court's chambers and an ex parte conversation. You're even, you're All just right. I think we got the point. They're disagreeing on an issue. Do you know some of the specifics of that, Spider? Go ahead. Yeah, I don't believe this is the actual issue that led to the. Uh, well, he gets taken into custody at the end of this clip. Yeah, but the actual issue that 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 led to it was when he found him into contempt was the lawyer exposed to the judge. He found out something was said in his chambers that shouldn't have necessarily been said, and the judge wanted to know how did you find out, and the lawyer reviews to reveal his source and I believe that's the most that's correct yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. what was said in the chamber he know who all was in the chambers so he's pissed off like how do you know this mm -hmm. and 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 uh uh Mr. Williams which is young thug counsel wants to know why I wasn't present for this conversation Mr. And, Steele. And Mr. Steele and, and he and, and things like y'all intimidating the witness which is uh YSL Woody mm -hmm, mm -hmm. trying to make him go against you know what I'm saying and and I'm gonna say, uh, uh, attorney Mr. Steels, he committed the most gangster act of 2024 <laughs> that I've witnessed because he threatened to hold him in 20 days of contempt, doing weekends, and, and and all his lawyer asked was, could I be housed with Mr. Williams, which is young thug, so we could continue uh, focusing on this case and, 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 and you know what I'm saying? That's that is a, a grand attorney. If I had the bread to to uh, to obtain him as a ret retainer, bro, and I got the utmost respect for him. And that that judge should be, because uh, to my knowledge, you can't fire a judge. They gotta retire, or you gotta force him to resign some way. He need to be. I don't think it's debarred because he's not a lawyer. 
But uh, what what is it? Spot of D Binks? I believe it's D Binks. Man, he need to get up out of there, bro. Because <laughs> he violating he violating this this man rights uh, uh, for due process as as an attorney. Judge Glanville. Mm-mm-mm. Judge Glanville of Atlanta is is, is violating this, this uh, attorney Steele's uh, vi- uh, 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 rights for due process. He said he not moving forward. Uh, he he need to you know what I'm saying? Yeah, but the judge actually says to the, to attorney Steele, you have some information that you should not have gotten. That's oh, those that those are his words. Because but 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 guess what? That's that offset that when when the the information he got it it. it it don't. It's not in your likeness, bro. It's not in the prosecution likeness. The and then you and you and you riding with the prosecution. And you supposed to be the unbiased person. You are supposed to be the uh, referee between the defense and the offense. Uh, offense. You know what I'm saying? You know something else ironic about this subject? It has a lot to do with pleading the fifth and immunity. And we just had this like conversation we about last week. Yeah. Here's another quote from Judge Glanville: "You're not supposed to have communication with a witness who's been sworn already." Um, no, no, no. That was uh, that's that's Steele said that. That's Steele. Steele told the judge before requesting a mistrial. So, uh, this is a real interesting, complicated. But, but my thing is, what's the problem? Because I've been on a case with three or four other people, and the, the good thing about having co defendants is that you got all these lawyers that could jump the the, the public defender. I mean, the the the, the, the DA. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So why, if anything that that was discussed in the chambers with this dude, which is in question also, if his lawyer went back and, and, and shared it with a uh, young thug lawyer, why is that a problem? Because they on the same team. They the defense. No, that's uh, and that's the thing. Because it should, like you say, that shouldn't be a problem. The problem is, according to Mr. Steele, was the conversation shouldn't have been had without his presence. In the legal sense. No, 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 no. The judge ain't got to ever be present no, when two, two two defense attorneys is talking and these dudes is on the same case. No, Steele said he should have been present if they oh, were right, having right, that right. conversation. Right, right. Well, he got he got 20 days of contempt, but he got him on the weekends only. So he goes he goes to jail on Saturday and Sunday for the next uh, 10 weeks. Mm-hmm. Okay, 20 so. 20 days total. But did he allow him to be uh, 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 housed with Mr. Williams, which is. I think he granted it. I believe we granted it. Okay, yeah, big bet. I got, I got the utmost respect for Attorney Steels, bro. He's a real ninja for sure. And a real attorney, he not laying down and giving up his his client. And you, and that's because he made the request to stay with him. Hell yeah, cause okay, I'm guessing he never been to jail before. But but if I gotta go, put me with my put me with my client, and I'm gonna continue my due diligence. You know what I'm saying? That that's that's respect. Man, I, I got the utmost respect for that man. Never met him, but shout uh, out him. I'm, I'm gonna read some final quotes on this to give some people the better understanding. It says, um, it says that uh, prosecutor Simone Hilton told witnesses that he could actually be held until all 26 defendants have their cases disposed of, regardless mm. of how long that might take. If that's true, what this is is, is coercion, witness intimidation ex parte communications that we have constitutional rights to be present for said steel mm-hmm. an outrage steel yep told the judge this so he's going off on the judge oh that clip yeah uh i still want to know how did you come up with this information judge glanfield asked who told you he asked steel what i want to know is why i wasn't there steel told the judge That's a- <laughs> <laughs> you know uh so after ordering steel to be removed glanville said he planned to continue with proceedings I'm not halting nothing, uh, you know. So this is a the, the the judge. The judge never admitted that the shit wasn't said. That's what that exactly. He need to get up out of there, bro. <laughs> and it need to be a petition, bro, because you're supposed to be uh have a fair trial, bro. Mm-hmm. Judge or jury. Mm-hmm. He's not playing fair. Well, we're gonna uh and somebody somebody freedom and their life at stake. Somebody may not ever see their kids again, and you playing around in that that role. You know, most of this back and forth that was going on between the judge and the attorney most likely did not happen in front of the jury. Okay. Because I think that. Of the course ju- not. They, 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 yeah. they, they let the jury get up out of there yeah. when they uh, the type of uh, but side the, conversation. But the jury is watching YouTube and reading right. all these articles. You know, I, yeah. I often think about the integrity of that. But don't. you know, they tell the jury every day do not go to yeah. the internet, do not Google this case. But I mean, come on. It's impossible. Thank you. It's impossible. Thank you. So the jury now, here's, here's my question. If you're on the jury, Aren't you feeling more sympathy for the defense now? Of course. Yeah. I, mean, I hope that he is, man. They seeing the real, bro, because the jury, the, the judge supposed to be the unbiased dude, supposed to be the referee between the defense and the 
defense and the uh, prosecution. The prosecution. All right. Well, we're gonna keep our eyes on this, man. This is a trial that's lasted longer than the O.J. Simpson trial, and mm. and uh, there's no like end in sight. You know, there's just so many defendants and so much evidence. Hey, free young thug, right? And and, and, and the victim in question is Young Nut, and he's from, and he's from Inglewood family in Atlanta, and I'm from Inglewood family, and I'm saying free young thug, bro. Everybody's supposed to have a have a fair trial, and you know what I'm saying. It, it don't appear fair. Uh, fair, excuse me. Well, I don't think the whole indictment in the first place was fair. I read this mm. thing from from uh, See, page to page. I didn't read it, and was very surprised that uh, Miss what's her name, Fanny, Fanny Willis, Willis. yeah, Miss Fanny from Inglewood originally. Yeah, <laughs> shout out, shout out, Fanny, out B T, Fanny. Hey, but stop doing that. Don't be doing that. Don't be trying to get people locked up, Fanny. Yeah, you know, one of my boys from L A. ended up getting dragged into a RICO case under Fanny uh, under in Atlanta. And they try to give him 20 years. He ended up taking a five-year deal because he said he looked at the jury. He looked at the jury in the morning and was like, there's no way I'm going to win this case. Mm. Free him. Bank thanks. Yeah, that's um, Matt Ronnie. Ronald. I mean, Matt. Matt Ronald. Matt Ronald. Not Matt Ronnie. Matt Ronnie from 60s. Rest in peace to him. Rest in peace, Matt Ronnie. But yeah, Matt Ronald. Matt Ronald. 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 Ronald Chapman. He should be coming home in the end of 2024 or the beginning of 2025 he was walking to his apartment during covid with his one of his kids just minding his business and then out of all angles georgia pd atlanta um atlanta pd gbi georgia bureau investigations lapd and he thought it was for his kid so he looked at his kid and was like what the hell did you get into and then the police were like no we're here for you Matt ronald and um, they ended up extraditing him to Georgia to do a stupid RICO case. But uh, free, free Matt Ronald, bank day. So Donald Trump couldn't beat Fanny either. Ain't that who stuck him to? Yeah, yeah. She a cold guy. Yeah, she is kind of cold. She's prosecuting uh, Donald Trump. Yeah, got him. It's over, right? Man, I want to meet her. I'm, um, you know, no, that was a different. That well, was different. He's got a. You know, Donald Trump is fighting like three or four cases right now. <sighs> yeah, he's fighting multiple cases. But um, all right, let's move on to uh, Tory Lanez. <laughs> Hey, before Tory Lanez went to prison, he married his baby mama at the last minute. Free Tory Lanez. And can any of you two guys explain why would a guy on his way to prison marry his baby mama at the last minute? Because he wants some family pussy. business. Because <laughs> <pussy. laughs> he wants some pussy. That's the, that's <laughs> like, the legal like, reason. Like, like yeah, you, you know what I'm saying. You get the family visits, nigga. The weekend visit, the barnyard visit. Beat the donies down and shit. Go back. You know what I'm I did it before. What do you my baby mama? But I, I got married on my way back to prison for those reasons. I could have got married in prison, but I didn't have long enough. So, how, so, so how I was it... I wasn't tripping off no. I ain't about to get locked in like that. So you got conjugal visit spiders? Yes. How does that work? Well, it depends on how many people on that yard or in that prison or qualify. But they just put you on the schedule. I think mine the most. The, the quickest time I got one was, I think it was like every 70 days at one point we was That's going out bragging. there. That's yeah. bragging. That's bragging. So you got so some coochie while you, you came yeah, back bragging. I would have been like, SPI, how was it? I could, and look, that was part of, you know that's part of the program, but let me tell you the worst shit. So, you know, when you go out there, your know, senior family visit is in two weeks. They give you a motherfucking list from like the real grocery store. You get to order all the kind of food you want. Mm -hmm. woo -woo. So, the day your family visit, they bring you out there a few hours before your people supposed to get there to clean up and you get your groceries, you can make a meal or whatever. So just imagine you leave the yard, everybody on the yard pumping you up. Well, I see you, nigga. <laughs> you finna go on one, bust one Damn. for me. Do the beat of that Bust one for me, do, damn. Do all that, all that. All that. Yeah, we can work. And then so they not expecting to see you for a couple of days. Imagine going out there, getting stood up, and having to come back across <laughs> Ugh, and coming back to that yard, that's the longest yard walk I ever had across the yard. It seemed like everybody was doing this in slow motion. <laughs> Even though they wasn't, that's how it felt, bro. That's the most devastating thing. You go out there, your groceries come. They bring you your food. I put this on solid. I bring your food. Now you waiting. The person, next, the van come. A female get dropped off next to you. You're like, okay, I got two more hours. Then another van come, you think it's gonna be your people. Somebody get dropped off next to you on that side. And then you realize they not coming. You try to cook some of this food, but your appetite is fucked up. You don't want to eat. So who shit. flaked on you? My wife. Who, my wife. Who who was? I mean, you wanna um Nah, we ain't doing that. Gonna put on, it's twenty years over, twenty years oh, okay, ago. Okay. It's in the nineties. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But you don't want you don't want to I mean, no. but that's cause that, she's still a beautiful and good she woman. Is, she is. We no, still, she she, she yeah. tied the knot with you when you But when, did she okay, here's my question. Did she have a good reason? Hell no. 
Hell no, I'm so mature beyond it now, so you can't trigger me. But hell no, I wasn't no good. It was a bullshit reason. Damn. But but keep in mind, ain't none of these prisons close, bro. So I commend these women that come up there. You know what I'm saying? Lancaster's probably the closest one. Lancaster, CMC. You know, one of the up. She came back after the one she missed, too. Of course. For you, another one. You ain't going to be that mad. Because you like, what you going to say, don't come? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but like, yeah, I'm a guy for <laughs> Baby, pull up like Huggies. <laughs> yeah, but that's crazy. Uh an inmate's telling you bust one for me, but that's just a <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, knocking out, knocking out the box, shit, that shit. The last thing I'm thinking about is you, bro. Of course, <laughs> bust one for me. <laughs> of course, but you know, people be waiting for you to come back for a whole nother reason. So that's another reason of major disappointment. I right, but look, see, uh, in, in, in the county jail, everybody be getting mail. Everybody be yelling to each other on on the tier. Yeah, I, I, yeah, yeah. She out there, it be joking like, yeah, she out there getting spanked down. She the answer, yeah. bro. Yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah, uh, Henry out there, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, they come on, bro. Like, yeah. it, it be that, like, bro, you gotta be, you gotta be Trump tight with the mindset if you're doing time and you gotta brought out there, bro. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I wouldn't even advise niggas to try to stay in love while they doing no time. Let it go. Do your time. Well, Tory Lane's wife, Raina Chisagni, filed for divorce last week, citing the, the regular irreconcilable differences as a reason for the split. Now, that's kind of messed up that that your wife divorces you when you're about halfway through your sentence. Oh, he's halfway through? Well, he's only going to do six years on the 10. Okay. So let me think. So, 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 so was it like raising infidelity? He was uh, in contact with other women or was it a reason? Irreconcilable differences uh, mean they don't want to state in yeah, those other reasons. She's not going to get specific unless she just gives an interview and breaks it down. So, so I'll be wrong to just jump to conclusions. I mean, you can speculate on it. Why, why would a girl that you have a child with that married you right before you went to prison, now, let's say, two years into your sentence, uh, let's see, all of 2023, he got, he got taken into custody in December of 2022. So he got all of 23 in and half of 24 in. Sancho. So he's only about a, a, a year and a half into a sentence. <laughs> Derek, Sancho. Sancho. That, that, Sancho is, 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 is the nigga that, well, uh, my bad. I'm like, yeah, uh, he out there, Sancho, oh, yeah. beating her little cheeks down. I was thinking about Sancho. I said, Henry, Sancho. Sancho. Like, all right, my bad. But, hey, bro, females, bro, you you deal with these men, and, and, and when, they, when they go to jail, y'all fall off, y'all drop out. Like, and, and I don't respect them type. And I got a daughter that's going on 18 this year, and I'm glad she got the same boyfriend she been dealing with because I'm not doing the shit, uh, the boyfriend every other month like these girls be talking. Because mm. like, I'm not, I'm gonna be on my daughter, and I'm gonna call, I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell my daughter exactly what what that is. That's that's whole shit. You know mm. what I'm saying? So to get off of that, because I'm veering off, but but nigga, you supposed to hold it down like pit man, bro. You supposed to hold it down, bro. Cause, cause I don't know what kind of background she got before she met Tory Lanez, but you, you, you comfortable because of this man. Mm. That's that's called come up come. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> he, I never heard that. No, 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 for real. Come up you, come. That's you got a baby by this man, and then you comfortable, whether you married or not. So you gonna be good. But man, man, don't 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 engage in nothing. Don't follow it, bro. You you married him. Hold it down and and support this man to the end. You know what I'm saying? Other, I, cause I don't respect it. Cause I I've been I've been in prison. I've been captured before. Monster Cody used to, he liked to use the word capture. I've been captured before, and I know how I feel for females to drop out. Somebody told me recently that you don't even have to be married to get conjugals no more. I never, well, they got they got tablets now, so I don't know. It's a lot different. And well, they, they say rainbow activities can get conjugals. That's bullshit. Hey, look, 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 look. I hope it's bullshit. No, no, but, but, <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> I, I think you got to tell no, lifers can get conjugals now. I know that. Well, yeah, you don't. Know, but but now because of the rainbows, you don't even have to be married. Just have a partnership. They didn't broke the door down for that. Bullshit. Well, California must uh, must uh, require marriage because they got married on June twenty fifth, twenty twenty three. So this was obviously in Tory Lane's idea that if I need if I want visits from her conjugal visits, I must be married because he's known he's got a seven year old with this mm. girl. Okay, hold on. Since Spider said that, right? Or I, I I got I got I got a I got a hypothetical right. Mm -hmm. So so say I'm Munchie B and, and I married the homie Takeoff for conjugal visits, but I'm trying to get the shit in. I'm trying to get the pack the dope in. <laughs> so is you gonna look at me different because I married with the homie on paper to get the dope in? Hell yeah. I might get, I might marry I might I might marry Lil Munchie, bro. Hey bro, I'm trying to I'm talking about you. Well, what about this? Will you go 
Would you think I'm a divorced you, blood? Like, what, what am I to get out? What would you think? <laughs> what would you think about a nigga that went and signed up and said he got fucked over and lost Padrinos? Oh yeah, I know a lot of people doing that. Oh yeah, but but, but the thing is, you ain't got to say it was a man that fucked you over. Right, I heard that too. That I heard that too. But 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 I don't know if they want to let men do that shit because 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 keep in mind, if, if if niggas is hooping cell phones in their ass, what makes you think they want to marry a man on paper and get the dope in? I'm not putting that beyond a lot of people. I got a, a person that I know from the east side. He been down for over 20 years, and he just recently got caught up in a scandal because he's in prison. And I guess he went there told them people he was a tranny and they put him in a, a female prison and he done raped something and got it pregnant. I, I, it's, I, I, it's going around right I, now. Everybody know about it. I don't care what what the, what the viewers or the comments say. It, it, I, I doubt it's true, but if they say uh, male on male marriage in the prisons and they let somebody come in there and if you be talking about you married the homie to, to get the dope in, because you could become a million. Niggas pay bill, bills from, from, from prison. Rental cars, they 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 care, they take care of families from prison. So, I know I've been there. I know what kind of money you can make there. If the homie could bring it in, I mean, of course, in a perfect scenario when there's no other option, he just had to. But it's like when the ratio for women to men is seven to one. Like, why would we get that? Desperate? Are we talking about who go? What gender go take the risk? You got more 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 men goes like, man, let's do it. Then then the females gonna be like, hell no, nah, nigga, I got kids. Mm-hmm. I understand why you say uh. I feel because because <laughs> th- 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 this will be. I know it's gonna be a clip, but I don't care. But 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 they are gonna be reacting to this and all that. But, but I'm but, not just saying it because it's gonna be a clip. Because if we was off camera, no, I still no, had no, the no, same no, no, not because it's be right. a clip. I know it, it's it's like niggas like nigga hell no hell no hell no because y'all never been in jail. Y'all know what that that jail money look like. Or y'all just, I'm secure myself. I think I, there's always I, a female to find it, to do it though. I would agree. Yeah. Man, you a lot of these females can't even get in. They on probation they self. Or, or or they broke it and don't got a car to get up there. You know, ain't none of these prisons buy nobody houses. So I'm saying, I'm talking about a homie that's from the turf that on on, on, on EC, on IF. Oh, they, they, they go hop in the hoop, have a blunt, and they hang in front of their lip all the whole way there. No, it ain't it ain't nothing bad about if they could come and have that visit without getting married. Now, the fact when getting married, of course that's okay. If it's just technical, it don't, but it's don't laugh. It don't sound, don't just, look good. I just wouldn't suggest me getting in a rap beef after that. Right. Much of you was married to a man. Like, it'll be exactly. bad. You feel me? Exactly. Yeah, man, I like I like women and I, I done had a lot of coochie in my life, bro. I, I you know what I'm saying? But but I, I, I know if I could get a, 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 some bread, 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 yeah, I mean, if I'm in a pen where it ain't in demand, don't let me be in high desert when I ain't got shit. Don't let me be in Pelican Bay. That nigga that's so down to come, I just need him to be down enough to find a female to come. Just get a girl off of me, man. Ah, uh, man. The homies that got all this time, they be like, Munchie, hey, find me a little bro. I be thinking like, bro, I can't, bro. Like, That'd be hey, the hardest shit to do, bro. bro they, I be, I, they, they see me on Instagram with some bras or something, and they think I, I just got the... Uh, magic wand, ping, here go bro. Nah, I don't got it like that, bro. But like, man, I so ain't good. I ain't got a, a ounce of gay in me, so I'm not tripping, nigga. I'm like, man, hey, bro, hell yeah, we we gonna be in there telling war stories the whole time, the whole weekend, I guess. Oh, hey, hey, maybe Tory Lane's wife didn't want to bring in the stuff. Mm. <laughs> I, I, I don't think. And there's no need for me to be married to you if you ain't gonna do what I need you to do. Mm. No, that ain't the case. No, I'm be, just kidding. Be because because Tory Lane's he don't have no reason to hustle. He rich. What if she found out she was pregnant and he ain't fucking? He didn't file a divorce. She did. Yeah, she, yeah, yeah. It's time to go. This Sancho got me blew up. Sancho might be talking that talk. Oh, she's also uh, asking for legal custody, physical custody of their seven-year-old son. Wow. So that means she's she's mad, right? Wow. She, she's in jail. He's in jail. You got custody yeah. anyway. Yeah. Ooh, what, what if he got bullshit. caught up getting another visit from another? Sh- he might have got caught up being a player. He is like a celebrity-ass nigga. Okay, in prison, I could be having a visit with, let's say, Brittany. And then uh, while I'm having that visit, Brenda could just walk in my visit. Mm. Versus in a county jail, L.A. County jail, your visit got took. Like, I already got a female at the window uh, with me already. So it's like, oh, who tried to, who came to visit you? Mm. Uh, you know what I'm saying? So maybe she walked in on a visit and he was already rubbing mm. on some thighs. Or maybe Kelsey Harris or Megan Thee Stallion went to go visit him. No, not Megan. Probably not Kelsey. Me- yeah, Megan. Maybe, maybe Kelsey. Megan. I want to I meet Kelsey. Megan, definitely not. But um, all right, man. Uh, any final words before we wrap this up? 
No, nah, not other than yeah, it probably has something to do. I couldn't. I wouldn't have no idea. Never, you never know, bro. Man, everybody, hey, shout out my boy Frosty, right? I ain't got his Instagram because he get them all knocked down. Uh, Alex know how ignorant the homie Frosty is, but the, <laughs> the, this is sweat suit, bro. Everybody go tap in with the homie Frosty, bro, on, on, on everything. Uh, King Gerb, you know what I'm saying? My young ignorant homie, you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? MB underscore THA Mayor on Instagram and Morals Over Money 92. On, on YouTube, you know what I mean? That's all that shit was. And you need to start posting on your YouTube more often. Man, I'm about to start posting like a stamp, for real, for real. Okay. I gotta get it going. And where can they check you out, Spider? Spider Lope, most easty, the number seven, on Instagram and on YouTube.com backslash Spider Lope, most easty. Black Box Productions going up. Seeing things. I just yeah. saw you, I just saw you on an interview where there was a window in the, I don't remember the name of the platform, but you was in a, like a warehouse. With why the, not podcast? The why not podcast? Yeah, I just saw that. that oh, that's just, where four extras did that. That that's yeah, yeah. like. Yeah, well, we are gonna set that for next week. Okay, I just saw you on that one. So uh, everybody, go tap in with Spider on that. Why not? Why podcast. not podcast? Yeah. And um, I'm at Alex Alonso one zero one on all social media platforms, and make sure. You are watching Street TV for clips and episodes, and you could also listen to this episode and all the other episodes we have on the platform on Spotify, iHeart, and Apple. And if you're on the Apple podcast listening right now, go ahead and leave us a rating and review. And thanks for tapping in with another episode of Straight Politics.